welcome to the Spotlight Show. I'm your host. My name is Jabez Napoleon Ogbole. Like every Sunday, I'm always excited to be on the show with you. We are recording live right now from the GBKM studio in the city of Toronto, in the country of Canada. So I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be, because we have viewers from across the globe who are watching us right now. So if you are live with us, thank you so much. And of course, if you see this recording, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel, download our app, and of course, share, tell friends and family. Thank you so much for you know taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us this uh, afternoon, Sunday afternoon in Canada, and it could be night or evening or even Monday in your country. Thank you so much. Remember, this program is all about you and how uh, we can get meaningful information to su succeed in our career, family, and of course, our various endeavor. I will do a special thanks to you who has always been there watching and supporting us. Thank you so much. And of course, our corporate uh, partners, you know, African Young Entrepreneur, based out of uh, Johannesburg. Check them out, www.ayeonline.org. Of course, Imani's Place here in Canada is a shelter for women. Very important organization. Uh, thanks to Imani's Place, www.imani'splace.org. Pan African Arts, Culture and Trade Institute, who are the powers behind this program, I want to say a quick thank you to you. Check them out. They may have an event near you, www.paacati.org. Daniela Corporation, thanks. And of course, Top Front Consulting, the, I, the leaders in IT training and certification, they power these shows on a weekly basis. And we're very grateful for their, you know, their support to make this happen. And why not? You can be a sponsor as well. Reach out to us at spot, uh, spotlight at gbkm.fm. Send us an email. Or why not? You know, give me a shout out or call me or check out my social media handle on Instagram, J A Y G B E S. Thank you so much, guys. Today is quite interesting <laughs> because we're all victims of this. Today's topic is what? How to spot fake news, guys. I don't know. Um, it's very hard for you to see anyone out there who hasn't seen some, you know, article or images or news or whatnot that is being, you know, that is being shared across various platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on WhatsApp, and many of this information are misleading because a lot of people don't do their due diligence to actually find out is this information true? What are the source of this information? Now we are so busy in our daily life that you know so many information come through our smartphone on a daily basis. Some of them we take a look at, some of them we ignore. But today we're going to talk about fake news guys and uh, you know let's do our own part to stop this minutes and then uh, be able to you know send meaningful information within our communities uh, across friends and family guys and that is why that is what this show is all about you know i want you to do the heavy lifting go there do some you know fact finding and do some you know data analysis and bring you you know the facts and that way you can make informed decision guys so yeah we're going to go into fake news today. We have a couple of information to share with you as we go. But first of all, what is fake news? <laughs> what is fake news? I don't like to use the word fake news. I just say misinformation. Okay. <laughs> you know, but fake news is, is, was very uncommon before. <laughs> but now, even with, um, with the rise of COVID-19, there's, you know, fake news has become something. It's a terminology that many of us use on a daily basis. Okay, guys. And, you know, some of these are done intentionally, you know, to misinform to cause you know, unnecessary uh, stress and anxiety. Some of these are done for fun, you know, maybe as a joke, or some of these are done as a result of some people doing some, you know, uh, data mining, trying to look up, you know, information warfare, that's what they call it, to see people's reaction to some of this information. But you and I sometimes may be fooled, thinking that, oh, this is news, <laughs> you know, so we're gonna find out how we can spot those fake news and what you and I can do, you know, to become part of the solution, guys. And that is why I'm very, very excited today. So, like I said, um, bogus stories can reach more people more quickly now via social media. And then uh, what good, you know, email used to be before, <laughs> it's not what it is right now. So, people are able to get information uh, faster. And this is why, you know, Facebook and Google have been doing a whole lot of work to try and what? Crack down on fake news sites, restricting the ability to, you know, garner ad revenue. And uh, perhaps that could dissipate the uh, amount of, you know, fake news online. Uh, but... Still, there's a whole lot of work to be done. Today, we're going to take a look at some of the work that was done by some wonderful organization. They actually called the International Federation of Library Association and Institution. Uh, so they created a guide for us to, you know, uh, spot fake news and be able to, you know, uh, know that it's fake and what are the things we should look out for before we start to share or believe those information first of all. Before you believe it, because you have to believe in something for you to share it. If you don't believe in it, you'll probably delete it or disregard it. So these are some of the ways. So why don't we go straight, uh, you know, the different types of fake news. I'm going to share an image with you. 
Uh, I want to give a special, a special shout out to you know visualcapitalist.com. Uh, this infographics is from them. Exactly. So you can see <laughs> different types of fake news and you know how you need to be able to spot <laughs> you know the dangerous ones and start spreading that misinformation. Because honestly speaking. We're not all journalists, okay? But we want to make sure that our friends and family are aware of their surrounding or what's going on in the community. But still, some of this information could be dangerous, okay? Because it could lead, lead to death and even suicide of many people. So we have to be very cautious because otherwise you'll become an accomplice. Okay, guys, so what are that? If you look at this image, you know, let's start from the bottom. It says parody. So definitely there's uh, articles or videos who are, that are created to mock or, you know, laugh at an issue. A lot of people do that, you know, for the fun, for the fun of it. Some of them use them as, uh, you know, content for their different social media handle to garner more views, you know. But a lot of people are ignorant, thinking that, oh, this may be true. A lot of them are for, 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 they are for fun, you know. It's just for, it's just for parody. And what does that mean? If created without being an obvious uh, parody, these types of article can still fool readers and be shared as real. So you have to be very careful, you know, is this, was this done as a joke or not? And how can you know if it was done as a joke or not? We're going to cover that in this show as well. I'm going to go to the next one, which says false connection. Look at that graphic. You see false connection? What does that mean? These are stories with headlines, visuals, and captions that don't support the content. Okay? Sometimes the cause is an honest mistake or poor journalism. But many times the false connections are deliberate to draw my attention. You know, so they could put an image of maybe Barack Obama, you know, and then they are talking about uh, Africa or Caribbeans. You know, sometimes there's no connection, but they do this intentionally, you know, to fool people. Sometimes it's poor journalism, like, um, you know, this article said, but many times they are done intentionally. You know, and how can we spot this? We're going to cover this, you know. Why don't we go to the next one? The next one, type, how, another different type of fake news is called misleading content. Oh my goodness, this is very common, <laughs> very common. And I'm going to show you some examples in this program today. You're going to be informed, trust me. Misleading content, you know, misleading use of information to frame an issue or individual, especially one not involved in the story. This can be caused by poor journalism or political influence. People do this a lot when it comes to politics, okay? Uh, but also caused by opinions being shared as news and the crazily bloodline between the two. So a lot of people have their own opinions, you understand? And they decide to indoctrinate a lot of people towards their own way of thinking. This is wrong. You have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. So this is another one. Again, misleading content is very common, especially during politics. In my community right now, like I told everyone in the show, it's no, no longer news. My country of birth is Nigeria. and There is a lot of misleading information, especially when it's towards uh, a ele election or with all the you know, issues going on in that country right now. You know? So you have, to be able to be very, you have to be very careful what is real versus fake versus misleading information. And of course, <laughs> As you can see, the, the image on the screen is like a meter, <laughs> okay? So we're leaving the ones that is, that, is, that is harmful, but less dangerous. And we're going towards the one that can create a whole lot of danger for people, hence the meter reading. So we talk about misleading content. Now we're going towards the, you know, uh, the yellow is towards the red line, which is false content. You know, genuine content that is shared with false contextual information, okay, such as an incorrect date or misattributed quote is very, very dangerous. Some people will share something that uh, maybe uh, Trump said, but Trump never actually said something like that. You know, they take it out of context, you know, to get your attention, and then you just begin to share out of sentiment, okay? Same thing with religious issues. You know, people take things out of context, and I'll show you se several examples. So the first context is very, very dangerous. As you can see, we're passing the middle mark of that, of that, of that uh, meter. So uh, this type of misinformation can appear on news sites with poor fact-checking or opinion-based reporting, but is clearly driven by an agenda with an attempt to influence. Dangerous, you know? So these are false content, and it could be in any, in any platform. Because remember, mainstream media doesn't mean most of the time they have the fact. Alternate media is something that we have to be careful of because not everybody claims to be a journalist. So it's something you have to be careful of. <laughs> Let's go to the next dangerous one. The next, <laughs> my director in the studio is laughing, so I know <laughs> laughter is contagious, so that's why. <laughs> okay, so the next one is in poster content. Oh my goodness. Um, when genuine source are impersonated in order to deceive the audience. Okay, remember, through this type of misinformation, it is used in a parody as a form of a joke, but it's also used for profit and propaganda purposes, such as sites disguised to look like news organization, but using fake credentials. You have CNN, then you see another site, CNNNN. You get, you get misled, thinking that, oh, it's CNN, without actually looking. You see some BBC, and you see BCC. Some of these sites are very, I know, <laughs> we don't go to the source of some of these, you understand, but we know their intent. Their intent is to mislead. 
you know, uh, to try to duplicate what seems to be original and share very misleading information. I see, so the meter tends to go down. And on this list now, the next one that's very, very dangerous is manipulated content. The deliberate manipulation of information such as digitally altering an image or making up quotes. This is very important, you see, because we're in the digital world and people can take my image or your image and then, you know, they started to some point to put, you know, negative captions and attribute it to you. This is very, very dangerous. This type of misinformation is easily proven fake with some research, but can spread too far. Because remember, the authors of this information know it's misleading. They don't care about you finding out the truth. Their intent is to make it go viral immediately and cause a lot of chaos and confusion within a specific uh, discipline, industry, or even community. So you have to be very cautious before you press the like button or the share button, guys. You get, and that is why I'm bringing this topic, okay, guys. And the most dangerous one, you know, on the list, which is considered the bottom of the red on the on the image, is the fabricated content. People just lie. Newly created false content designed to deceive and do harm. People do it a lot. It's common in Africa. It's common in India. They just want to create harm. They want to cause riot. They want to cause. They want people to just, you know, they want people to lose their life. You know, they want people to lose their property. Those are very, very dangerous ones. This is include deep fake videos. I don't know if you've seen it. People can actually take your video, like now I'm talking. People can take this, use what they call AI, artificial intelligence, and everything I'm saying right now, they will just turn it upside down and make me say different things. It's called deep fake videos. They've tried it with, you know, they mostly do it with uh, famous people. Okay, guys, you know, presidents and, you know, celebrities, etc. So you have to be very, very cautious. And sites posing as legitimate, legitimate news organization. There are so many sites right now we're going to share with you that actually are fake sites, but you will not know because their logo, their images look similar to the original. You know, and people now and then, because the amount of information that gets thrown to us on our phone, you know, we don't actually try to, you know, verify. So we just see, oh, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera, or this or that, and we just share thinking that, oh, look what they're doing, you know? So guys, I hope this information has been very useful to you on how to spot the fake news, okay, guys? And these are the different types of online misinformation and the dangers of that, okay, guys? But we're gonna go quickly and see how we can spot some of these uh, fake news, guys. So there's an uh, MIT study, actually there was a study that was done and by MIT that found that four stories on Twitter were 70% more likely to get retweeted. It's very easy. And we know with the era of Trump and so many other people, you know, people just see some kind of news because it aligns with their own beliefs or their state of mind or their agenda. They just share it, which actually verifying if this is real. Guys, it's not everything you see on Twitter. It's not everything you see on social media that is real. Okay, guys, people are actually there to, that is their work, to spread false news. And there are so many cyber cafes, you know, in different parts of the world. This is their aim, you know, and a lot of them are there to do different things. From you know, from jokes to false connection, misleading content, you know, you know, totally false content, you know, imposter content, and even you know, fabricated news. So guys, we have to be careful. Let me show you an image and let's see if you can decide what is real or fake. Let's go to the next image. No, let's go to the next one. Awesome. We're gonna come back to this. Let's go to the next one. Yes. <laughs> so if you see something like this, it says New York Times video. This is actually from the New York Times. Uh, 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 um, you know, uh, one of the uh, it's the Twitter handles, and it says leaked statement from uh, Putin says Russia will attack the U.S. If you are seeing this, this went viral a couple of years ago. I'm sure a lot of people seeing this were like, oh, New York Times, breaking news. But guys, you know that New York Times, if you are very familiar with New York Times, this is not how they do their breaking news. If they have a breaking news, it's all over their various platform, guys. Okay, so what happened here? So this is a fake news, and the Twitter account, which is called uh, NYT video, New York Times video, is a real New York Times account. Yes, any real, but what happened? Okay, but something is off. If Russia was planning to attack the U.S. with missiles, uh, you know, they would, the, the, the news agency would take that story very serious and would be on all their major platforms, not just on one. Okay, uh, tweets are typically written in full sentences. The judge just write it like this. Okay, but this tweet doesn't capitalize the first letter or end in a period. As you can see, leaked statement from Putin, so it's, grammatically is incorrect, the, pun the punctuation, everything is off. So these are one of the clues because New York Times are reputable. They want to take time to make sure that the, the sentences is actually accurate. It's not like everyone nowadays that grammar doesn't mean anything to a lot of us, you know, just write it, tweet it, people will understand, <laughs> but not some of these social media handles. However, this was actually one of the stuff of hackers who are hacked their, their, their channel 
to use this fabricated news to deceive people. But obviously, New York Times took it out. But obviously, if you look at it closely, you would have thought, oh, this is new. But it's not new. So what they found out is that um, uh, the reason it looks so strange is because hackers wrote it, hijacking the account and writing subsequent tweets attributing the attack to the, at, attributing the, attack to the hacker group Open Mind. You see what I'm telling you? There's so many groups right now. That is a missing form. Cause, you know, unnecessary anxiety amongst various communities. You have to be very careful. You see something like this, check other news media. Are they reporting it? Because remember, now and this, if you, sometimes when there's a breaking news, trust me, CNN, BBC, local news channel always saying the same thing. Okay? So when you see something like that and no, no other person is carrying it, you know that it's, it's, a, it's a fake news. What is the, let's go to the next one. <laughs> let's see if you can guess if this is real or not. Yes, so this is ABC News, breaking Capitol Hill shooter identified as a right-wing extremist. Anyone that sees this, when this happened, like, oh, okay, ABC News. I'm familiar with ABC News. They'll start to spread it. Is this fake or true? Of course, the, you guess right, it's fake. How is it so? And I'll tell you, because after we come out from break, we're going to share some of the ways we can, uh, you know, identify some of these fake news. But let me tell you about this image. So this story is top to bottom false. Misidentified the gunman in March 28, March 28 Capitol Hill shooting and quoting a fake analyst blaming the video on Donald Trump supporters. This site is trying to look like ABC News right down to the logo, okay, with ABC in the black cycle, but it's not good enough imitation. You know why? The URL, if you look at the link, the link is where you catch them because ABC is ABC.com. But if you look at this new site on the, on the URL is ABC.com.co. <laughs> which is very weird URL. That is to tell you that uh, is a country code from Colombia. Okay, so you see why they imitate the real? Anyone sees this, oh, it's ABC News, let me just spread it. But it takes someone who is mentally awake, conscious, who is, love his neighbors himself, because you don't want to spread fake news that could harm people. To check and look at this news, look at the, um, the, the, the author. I also look at the link. What I do when I see a lot of these things, I try to verify the site. It doesn't take more than five minutes, guys. Trust me. Just go to Google. Go out there. You already know if it's fake or not because there are a lot of software that actually identify this. This was actually fake. But whoever saw it, we think it's ABC News. But I just showed you the domain. Zoom into the domain. You will see that it's... We're not going to zoom into it, into it in the studio. But if you look at it, if you go online, you'll see that it's fake. You see, guys? So that's another one. Okay, let me share one more before we go on break. Let me share one more. You tell me if this is real or fake. <laughs> I love I love this episode. All right, which post about African American issue is from a fake page? There's so many fake pages on 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 Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Okay, if you look at these two now, you say there's not there's no harm to it. The first one says teach our youth how to be good businessmen, not good employees. The second one says black elevation. You know, is it which is fake? Can you tell? Well, black elevation, okay, is part of an influence operation. And Black Excellence is a real Facebook. So Black Excellence, which is the one with a young, with a young kid, is actually real. But the Black Elevation is a page that a lot of investigations have done, and they found out that they are fake news site. That's what they do. They pretend to be real, okay? Try to blend with Black Lives Matter, try to blend with so many activist groups, you understand? And once people start to associate them, then they start to spread rumors. Rumors, things that never really happen. So let's go with it. So Black Elevation was the largest of the fake pages Facebook shut down at the end of July. They had nearly 140,000 followers. Imagine that, not four, not 14, not 140, 14,000 followers. So imagine those 14,000 followers taking some of these fake news and also sharing it with their friends and community. You see how they go uh, white fire, okay? So Facebook identified them, closed them down. Black Elevation also had a Twitter account, okay? And it was identified as a Russian influence. So when they did their, when they did their um, study, they found it was a, one of those Russia, uh, you know, influential pages that tried to decimate false information, you know, try to influence people's thinking towards one side or the other, okay? Um, so they mimic a lot of groups like Black Lives Matter, etc. you know? If you go to, that page is probably shut down now, but if you do some research, you see a lot. I saw one of their posts, <laughs> you know, how white kids, the school boys were using the N-word. You know, and that was found false because there's no news report anywhere out there. And they couldn't even, you know, give you or direct you to any other URL. Because remember, when you write an article or you write a story, you always have to attribute your sources to different things. But there was nothing like that. So these are some of the things, guys. I know a lot of us watching were like, 
uh, Jay, you just talking. You know, some of these things I believe in it and I'll share whether it's fake or not because the images or the information is meaningful. But guys, trust me, you know, you can do a whole lot of harm to people. So, you know, so all the images we share so far, they are all fake. You know, we, I couldn't even tell. It's because I did my study and I found out they were fake. And some, some of these um, news agencies did their own study as well to, you know, tell us that they were fake as well. And that's why we're able to know that they were fake. But we're going to go on a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you how you can spot some of these fake images before you start to share. So sit back and relax. Let's go on a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to teach you how you can spot and how you can know some of these, you know, Facebook pages or Twitter messages or what you see, images or videos you see on WhatsApp, if they are true or fake. So sit back, relax, and we'll be right back. My name is Carol, and I'm currently a project coordinator. I took the project management course. I learned a number of things, one of which was interview skills. I learned about the Agile framework and how that's very different from the waterfall model of project management. At Top Run Consulting, the key unique area that we try to focus on is not to just impart certification knowledge, but the application of real world tools. Back in June 2017, I did the business analysis course at Top Run. I learned the basic and advanced skills and tools to be successful in business analysis fields. Welcome back to the Spotlight Show. I'm still your host. My name is Jebez Napoleon Ogbali. You know, if you're just joining us, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, today's topic is how to spot fake news. And uh, if you've been with me before the break, welcome back. And uh, we told you that once we are back, we're going to go straight into how you can spot a fake news, a fake article, a fake video, etc. Guys, I want to say thank you once again, you know, for, for, for joining us. If you're just joining us, remember, like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, download the app. And of course, we are the mouthpiece of community, G GBKM Network here in the city of Toronto and uh, the whole of Canada. So why not, you know, join us as we, you know, proclaim our black excellence and be able to represent, you know, the black community in a very positive manner, guys. So yes, let's go straight to how, yes, our advice on how you can spark fake news, okay? So remember, uh, there's many types of misinformation. We shared that before, some are for jokes, but people take it as real news. Some are actually intended, intended to be fake, you know, some are just misleading content. So there's so many types of fake news, guys. So Remember, we're going to give you advice how you can spot some of those fake. And uh, there's, uh, you know, the most important thing is to consider the credibility of the article. It's very important. People, I don't know why people are just becoming lazy. Just take two minutes of your time. Go to Google and see what other news agencies carry that information before you start to share. Okay, guys, it's, it's very important. Don't let emotions, you know, carry you because this doesn't serve no purpose. It doesn't help anybody. If every, all of us are misinformed, you understand, then how can we really be able to, you know, come together as a, as a unifying force to debunk some of this information? You know, we take a wrong turn. So it's very important to verify the credibility. Uh, people's ability to discern and share real articles over fake nearly tripled after people were reminded. So what this means is that after a show like this, you tell people how to spot fake news, you know that? It even enabled the fake news to spread. <laughs> and these are the study. I don't know what's happening with we humans, you know, mankind. Guys, trust me, I don't know what's going with us. When you tell us not to do something, that's when we do it the most. And it's, I'm laughing because it is strange. It is strange, guys. So <laughs> now let's talk about, let's, let me share that image with you on how to spot, spot some of these fake news, guys. Yes, how do you spot fake news? And this is from the, like I told you before, uh, this study is made possible by, um, you know, the International Federation of Library Association Institute. You can see their logo there. Thanks to them for this particular image they put together to help us know how you can spot fake news. As this image shows, you know, you have to consider the source. Very important. You have to, I told you before, you have to consider the source. You know, if you're familiar with website, Google never lies. Go to CNN.com, you see the real website. You know, there are so many other even better search engines than Google based on the specific use case. Verify the source. And how can you do that? Investigate the site to make sure it's legitimate. Check its mission and its contact info to understand if it's news, satire, or an opinion. Because remember, there are so many sites created intentionally to be conservative. Okay? They don't care about anything else. They are just, what are they doing? Pushing their conservative agenda. And there are so many sites out there that's very liberal. They don't care. All they are doing is pushing their liberal ideology. So you have to be very cautious. You understand? To know, you know, what is this? Even the mainstream medias, CNN, Fox News, Al Jazeera, they are always leaning to one side. Trust me, nobody's impartial. Okay? So check the content. It's very important. Check the source. 
okay? And how can you do that? By going to the website, you understand, Google, see what other people are saying about them, okay? And that way you can know what kind of uh, information these people are proposing. So that way you don't get deceived. Uh, so that is the source. The next one is the URL, the web address, okay? <laughs> Be very, very careful. The way of unusual top-level domain names like .com, .co, you know, it's weird. If it's .com, it's .com. If it's .ca, it's .c. If it's .org, it's .org. Anything beyond that, then you know that somebody is layering in something on top to intentionally deceive. Like we said just now with the uh, ABC News. ABC News .com. But the site I was sharing that information was .com, .co. You know, so that gives you something to be cautious about. Okay, guys? So check the URL and make sure that it's, it's, it's the original site. Okay? Just do that. It won't take you more than one minute. You know, save somebody's life. Save somebody's business, okay? Because it's easy for people to get offended nowadays due to religious affiliation or political affiliation. I'm telling you, a lot of damages are done. Hmm? Or even gender, exactly. Very, very important. So the next thing you check is the test, okay? How do you check the test? Does the article have spelling errors? You know, punctuation. Trust me, a lot of people <laughs> nowadays don't even know spelling errors and punctuation <laughs> because they are so used <laughs> to writing in the social media language. <laughs> if they, everyone wants to use shortcut. It's true. You know, people say, oh, I'm going through this. Instead of using T-H-R-O-U-G-H, -H, they say T-H-R-O-U. Simple, short, but true, fully speaking. If these are very, very important information, it's coming from a reliable source, they, take, they, they spend their time to check the grammar and the punctuation. It's very, very important, guys. Okay, if you can't do that, at least check the URL. Okay, if you can't do that, at least Google to see how many other sites is carrying the information. Trust me, there's no important news or, you know, uh, a breaking news that a lot of people are not interested in. Okay, so that's another way, guys. I hope that is very informative. So consider the source, you know, uh, check the URL. So we're just going to continue as well. Uh, not just that. There's so many things you can do, guys. And this image captures everything. And that's why we're leaving this image here. So the next one, we're going to look. When you see an information, you've checked, you've checked the, the source. Make sure it's a reputable source. If you know a reputable source, look at the kind of information they, they display. If they, in the past, all they do is send out jokes and people think it's real. Or all they do is send out, you know, you know uh, Libra views or conservative views or specific kind of views. Okay, what I'm saying? And, of course, check the grammar and the spelling. The next thing is the information. As this, is, uh, as this image says, read past, you know, the headlines. Note who is quoted. Verify the information on that side. This is a very good way to separate opinion from news. Verify the information. What is so hard about doing that? Some people are very, they, what they call, I, I call them sticky fingers. Boom, they see a video. Oh, and it aligns with their beliefs or their agenda. Boom, they share it. See, I told you, this is what is happening. And you ask them, what is the source? Does, does the source matter? The source matters. I see a lot of people share images from the past and say it's COVID images. That is wrong. We know right now that India is going through a lot with the COVID crisis. But I have a lot of Indian friends, trust me. You know, some of the images you see, and not even from what is happening right now. Four years ago, five years ago, exactly. Even in my own country, Nigeria, you see killings, you know, attributed to aesthetic ethnic groups or, or associations, but these things happened many, many years ago, okay? I'm not trying to support anybody, but what I'm trying to say is before you start to share, you verify, you do your own due diligence, since you want to be a journalist, okay? Before you start sharing information, or since you're a town crier, do your own source because a lot of people have lost friends and there's been a lot of enmity because people have been misinformed. You know, and people's social media handles from Facebook to WhatsApp, Telegram is being bombarded with all sort of information. So do your due diligence to verify otherwise. Don't even share it. Okay, guys. And then, of course, we've talked about the information. What about the author? Yes. Somebody sharing information. Let's verify this person. You understand? Has this person been sharing false information before? Okay, check the author's bio, do a quick search on them. Are they credible to write about their story? If you are talking about economics, for instance, you can verify that person. If in the previous past, what they be writing about is, 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 is um, you know, what they call it, um, um, you know, trivia issues. Then all of a sudden, now he's becoming an economic, economic analyst. You know, verify. Verify the source. Or find out if this person, all they have been sharing all, is, is information that causes division. Then all of a sudden, now they are sharing some kind of information. Do your due diligence. I told you guys, I, I do this sometimes, and it doesn't take more than two to five minutes. Okay, guys, because I, we, we, a lot of us have smartphones now. <laughs> they call them smartphones because I don't know if they have their own brain to think, but because they're connected to internet, and, you know, Google and the rest are your friends. So do that. And, of course, the date is very important. Check the date, guys. Sometimes older news stories are shared again, and they get traction because, event, because of current events. But that doesn't mean they are relevant now. 
you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of terrorist information or, you know, a, a, some information to cause, you know, unnecessary chaos, just old news that people try to reshare again and then put a different caption, you know, using images. These are, these are intended to mislead guys. And you won't know, I won't know, except you take some of these steps that we're sharing with you to do your own due diligence. Very important, guys. Don't just hit the share button. It's very, very important. And of course, your buyers. <laughs> that is very important. This is where I catch a lot of people all the time. Okay? Especially with the rise of opinionated journalism and, and website profiting from polarization. It's very important. Consider the intended audience for this story and if your own beliefs could affect your judgment. I've seen a lot of, you know, information for left wing and right wing, you know, or religious, uh, uh, religious people who are affiliated with a particular religion versus the other, and they says, share some information. Remember, they're doing this in intentionally. This is their belief, this is their bias, and, you know, they send it there. So you'll be able to decipher. Don't just think that, oh, because somebody went through the pain of writing an article or doing a video, he wants to actually inform us. He's not trying to inform us. He's trying to, you know, misdirect your opinions and your beliefs. So be very, very careful. Last but not the least, guys, you know, is the expert. If a story feels flimsy, it doesn't seem to be properly cited, consider asking an expert. Trust me. If somebody, like in the Nigerian community, there was a news, I think, I believe it was last year, that was said that Canada, Canadian, uh, Canada government is looking for a lot of expert trade from Nigeria, you know, and everyone was going crazy. You know, the news attributed it to uh, even the president of Nigeria was trying to, you know, speak to Canadian government to stop taking Nigerians out of the country. But it was all false. It was all false. The first thing you should do is ask your immigration consultant, your immigration lawyer. Hello, brother. Hello, sister. Is this real? Easily you debunk that news. Uh, when I saw it, I told people, like, no, this is not possible. Trust me. This is not how it works. And we found out that. <laughs> but however, whoever wrote that content, that person's blog, was on fire at that point in time because there was so much traffic and that was what the intent of such misleading information. So be careful, check out the author and see if they are credible. And I hope all this information I share with you has been very, very beneficial to you because guys, it's very, very important, you know, let's be our brother's keeper, our sister's helper and let's, you know, be able to spot some of these fake news and, you know, let, you know, a lot of people are stressed when they see a lot of this information. And guys, why don't you try and balance your information? I see a lot of people spend so much time on negativity, you know, religious violence, you know, or, you know, political, political discussion, etc. Sometimes you need to balance it for your own mental well-being. It's very, very important, you know. And stay away from any negative news that doesn't bring any sort of, um, any sort of uh, benefit to you. You know, it's not every news that you should, you should, you should, you should put into your mind. There's some things you should just not listen to. And what not, of course, based on, your, uh, based on your affiliation, if you are religiously inclined, politically inclined, you understand, stick to those media or those sites, you understand, that you are comfortable with their information or news. And, and of course, if you are a Libra, please, you know, be cautious. If you are a conservative, you know, please be cautious. If you are religious, please be cautious. And of course, remember, that is what this spotlight show is all about. We go out there, do the heavy lifting, and we bring this information. So we're going to go away from this image, and uh, you know, as we come up to the end of the show, I want to say a special thank you to GBKM Studio, special thank you to Top Run Consulting, who has been supporting us and making this show possible. So guys, please, you know, patronize them. Go to their website, www.toprun.ca. Are you in Africa? Are you in Europe? Are you in North America? Are you in Asia? You know, wherever you may be, the Middle East, they are there. They can always set you up to coach you virtually or even have affiliation in your country. So that way, you know, you want to get IT certification, looking for a new career, or you want to advance in your career, why not? They are the people too. Or you're looking for a job, you're a new immigrant, why not? They are the people too. B. So remember, wherever you find peace, like I always tell people, it's your home. Okay, guys? And if you are having peace in whatever country you may be, if you're from the African diaspora, you're in the Caribbean, you're in Asia, Middle East, or even in Canada, okay? Why not participate? Like I always say, <laughs> practice what you preach. To whom much is given, much is expected. Okay? Be a role model in your home, okay? In your community. And of course, support local businesses because a lot of them are going through a lot, guys. So remember, I will never stop talking about uh, multiple streams of income. So please, if you have that business idea, you know, or that product, why not, you know, try to monetize it. Reach out to us. Uh, send us an email, spotlight at gbkm.fm. If you have any sort of uh, product or services you want us to talk about, why not reach out to us? That is why we are here in the community. You know, no one else can represent us but us. No one else can talk about our problems but us who have experienced it. So I want to say thank you guys for that. And of course, 
network with like minds. Okay, guys, <laughs> you cannot want to prosper, and all uh, ninety percent of your of your of your contacts, you know, are not into businesses or are not into a specific career. Why not? You need to network with like minds. It's very very important. Multiple streams of income is very important, guys. Build that business so it can outlive. It can outlive you. You know, let's start building business that outlive us. You understand? A lot of people are so focused <laughs> on one on one business, and that's what they do for the next twenty years. There's no expansion, you know. And of course, once they are no longer here with us, the business goes with them. But that's not what we want. Okay, guys. So thank you so much. And as I come to the end of this um, the show, remember, I'm going to leave you with this. You are always in the spotlight. The change you seek begins with you. <laughs> Good night. This is not your regular show. It is an interactive section. Powered by the masses. Hey, why you go back? You go and do that. Wake up. You go come. I just said, no. I don't go and do that. Where we discuss issues that cut across politics, security, health, current affairs, governance, and so much more. Slices of humor to keep you entertained and thrilled. We are the GPK Ham Street Top Tier. This is not your regular show. It is an interactive section powered 